In this presentation, you will learn about classical studies in kinship. Kinship is the system of social organization based on family ties. By 1850s, the modern study of kinship was prevalent, which by the end of 19th century came to be a full-fledged field in anthropology. However, the field of kinship has been very confusing as well as controversial from the beginning. Kinship can refer to blood relationships, consanguine relationships, and those that are established by marriage. Within all cultures, we see this form of organization, that is, categories of kins and of fins, and its association with certain rights and obligations make up what anthropologists call kinship system. Kinship thus remained the most universal and basic underpinning of all human relationships that are known by various names. According to Encyclopedia Britannica, if the study of kinship was defined largely by anthropologists, it is equally true that anthropology as an academic discipline was itself defined by kinship and that until the last decades of the 20th century, for example, Kinship was regarded as the core of British social anthropology and no thorough ethnographic study could overlook the central importance of kinship in the functioning of so-called stateless, non-industrial or traditional societies. Lewis Henry Morgan, the American ethnologist and anthropologist, is regarded as the founder come principal investigator for kinship systems. His approach and studies laid the foundation of the system of kinship studies in anthropology. He states different types of kinship systems in his book, Systems of Consanguinity and Affinity of the Human Family. Other famous theorists and scholars include the English scholar Radcliffe Brown, Evans, Pritchard, Forte, G.P. Murdoch, and Levi Strauss. Classical Studies in Kinship the 19th century American anthropologist Lewis Henry Morgan was interested in the evolution of culture as a general human phenomenon and held a strong belief that there were universal evolutionary stages of cultural development that characterized the transition from primitive to complex societies. And because of this belief, Morgan is known as unilineal evolutionist. He is thus best regarded for his contribution on the human social institutions known as the kinship system. Morgan's theoretical insights, Bernard et al. highlights, rest principally on the comparative study of North American Indians and most especially on his work on the Iroquois, the tribal confederacy in the northeastern United States among whom he conducted both field and archival research. Morgan's studies, principally published between 1851 and 1877, provide landmark accounts of systems of kinship and marriage in general, and in particular, the shape of matrilineal descent structures. Thus, the Iroquois matrilineal system, though not matriarchal, was revealed by Morgan as permitting women to exercise exceptionally high levels of political influence. The Iroquois kinship system surprised Morgan. For example, as mentioned in Moore, collateral kin were classified as lineal kin. The same terms are used for father and father's brother, for mother and mother's sister, and for siblings and parallel cousins. Descent among the Seneca was reckoned through the mother's line, and thus a child is a member of his or her mother's lineage, not his or her father's. Morgan further observed that Iroquois political organization was an extension of kinship. In 1859, Morgan discovered that similar kinship systems were used by the Ojibwa of Upper Michigan and possibly among the Dakota and Creek. This led Morgan to a new approach to ethnographic data. Rather than solely document the folklore of the Iroquois, Morgan began to explore the relationships between different societies as reflected in shared systems of kinship. Morgan's greatest discovery, as anthropologist Leslie White put it, 
was the fact that customs of designating relatives have scientific significance. That discovery was documented in Morgan's magnum opus, Systems of Consanguinity and Affinity of the Human Family. Morgan's studies of kinship were based on extensive questionnaires. Morgan sent a printed questionnaire requesting information about kinship terms to counselor offices, missionaries and scientists around the world. This cross-cultural survey combined with Morgan's own field research resulted in kinship data from 139 different groups in North America, Asia, Oceania and ancient and modern Europe. While in Fiji in 1869, Lorimer Fissin, a missionary, journalist, and anthropologist, received one of these questionnaires. It drew his attention to anthropology and he became an ardent follower of Morgan, with whom he corresponded extensively. Fissin's research into Australian Aboriginal kinship systems, based on interviews with European settlers, provided important data for E.B. Tyler, J.G. Fraser, and Emil Durkheim, as well as Morgan. The landmark publication in the 20th century studies of social organization, Social Anthropology of North American Tribes, edited by Fred Egin, developed Morgan's approach to the study of North American Indians, though it eliminated its evolutionary dimension. Influenced by the British structural functionalist A.R. Radcliffe Brown, the contributors attend mainly to the social and political organization of a large variety of societies, especially the various plains, Indian society of the North Central United States. The focus is principally on kinship organization, although other types of relationships, such as the joking relationship famous among many North American Indian peoples, are considered as well. Morgan's goal was to trace the connections between systems of kinship and to explore their progressive changes as man developed through the ages of barbarism. At this point, Morgan had not outlined the evolutionary scheme that forms the explanatory structure of his ancient society. Rather, Morgan approached kinship systems as if they were languages and modeled his analysis on the comparative method. Alfred Reginald Radcliffe Brown a British social anthropologist famously associated with structural functionalism who drew heavily on Durkheim's work sought to understand how cultural institutions maintained the equilibrium and cohesion of a society. Although he did field work in the Andaman Islands and Australia, Radcliffe Brown was more interested in deriving social laws governing behavior from the comparative study of different cultures than in cultural description based on intensive feed work in one culture. According to Encyclopedia Britannica, Radcliffe Brown's theory had its classic formulation and application in the social organization of Australian tribes. Treating all Aboriginal Australia known as the time, the work catalogued, classified, analyzed, and synthesized a vast amount of data on kinship, marriage, language, custom, occupancy, possession of land, sexual patterns, and cosmology. His later works include Structure and Function in Primitive Society, Method in Social Anthropology, and an edited collection of essays entitled African Systems of Kinship and Marriage, which remains a landmark in African studies. Radcliffe Brown's study of kinship began in 1904 under Rivers, who himself followed the method of conjectural history, first under the influence of Morgan and later in the form of what he called ethnological analysis as exemplified in his history of Melanesian society, in which Rivers highlighted the importance of investigating the behavior of relatives to one another as means of understanding a system of kinship. Radcliffe Brown conducted ethnographic research among the Carrera and other Aboriginal groups in Western Australia from 1910 to 1912. Radcliffe Brown's impact is evident in the writings of his students. When he left the University of Chicago, his students presented him with a volume titled Social Anthropology of North American Tribes. 
that group including fred egin morphis offler and soltax all became important figures in american anthropology according to radcliffe brown the unit of structure from which a kinship is built up is the group which should be identified as an elementary family consisting of a man and his wife and their child or children whether living together or not children may be made members of an elementary family by adoption or by birth further there also exist compound families such as polygynous and monogamous the existence of the elementary family creates three special kinds of social relationship that between parent and child between children of the same parents and that between husband and wife as parents of the same child or children these three relationships that exist within the elementary family constitute as the first order whereas the relationships of the second order depend on the connection of the two elementary families through a common member such as a father's father mother's brother wife sister and so on in the third order relationships are such as father's brother's son and mother's brother's wife thus with the genealogical information one can trace relationships of the fourth fifth or nth order an important figure in kinship literature is no doubt claude levi strauss a french anthropologist and ethnologist a significant contributor to the theory of structuralism levi strauss's work on cross cousin marriage clearly owes a considerable debt to radcliffe brown's work on australia he both adopts radcliffe brown's three types of cross cousin marriage as the three possible elementary structures of kinship and reanalyzes australian material in the first of the ethnographic sections of the elementary structures of kinship while radcliffe brown regarded kinship as an extension of familial relationships to the tribal community in such a way as to achieve progressively higher levels of social integration Levi Strauss regarded kinship as the product of a mode of thought which operated at a global level ordering people into opposed relationship categories such as father's father and mother's father Levi Strauss argues that social anthropology is devoted especially to the study of institutions considered as systems of representations he uses representations as Durkheim did to refer to beliefs sentiments norms values attitudes and meanings those institutions are cultural expressions that are usually unexamined by their users in that narrow but fundamental sense anthropology examines the unconscious foundations of social life this search for the underlying structures of social life led levi strauss to explore three principal areas or systems of classification kinship theory and the logic of myth levi strauss used the notion of the binary structure of human thought to analyze kinship applying the work of marcel mauss who in the gift had tried to demonstrate that exchange in primitive societies was driven not by economic motives but by rules of reciprocity upon which the solidarity of society depended in elementary structures of kinship levi strauss took mauss his concept of reciprocity and applied it to marriage in primitive societies arguing that in those societies women were a commodity that could be exchanged levi strauss contended that one of the first and most important distinctions a human makes is between self and others this natural binary distinction then leads to the formation of the incest taboo which necessitates choosing spouses from outside of one's family Thank you for watching the presentation